Good morning, it's Patsy White with another five minute ministry to motivate your month. Um, a lot is going on, of course, as always, but you know, one of the things I've um, heard people um, talk about is that they're struggling with fear. Um, and we know that perfect love casts out all fear, so we have really nothing to fear in Christ. But I wanted to share a passage that um, I think will serve as some encouragement. Um, not only because, um, you know, when fear does hit us, um, we can end up feeling um, hopeless, feeling like some, somehow uh, God is not bigger than the thing that we're afraid of. But also, um, we don't necessarily remember to speak to the fear and cast it out. And so we end up beating ourselves up because we're in fear. You know, and being hard on ourselves, like, why am I, you know, getting completely balled up about what we're not doing and criticizing ourselves or being hard on ourselves about that. So I wanted to share um, in um, John chapter 14, this is where um, Jesus is talking to his disciples. Um, and he starts out with the, you know, the let not your heart be troubled, you know, don't permit um, fear and concern, anxiety, worry, all those things to take over your heart. But, you know, his disciples are terrified. I mean, they are pretty much freaking out, you can tell, because, you know, he says, you know, I'm leaving, but I'm preparing a place for you. And when I come back, I'm going to bring you um, back with me. And, you know, Peter's like, well, you know, where, you know, this is um, 14 going through. I'm going to um, move quickly through to 60, and I'm not going to read all of it. I'm just going to paraphrase. But... Um, you know, he's saying, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And Thomas is like, well, God, where are you going? I mean, you know, where are you going and why, why are you leaving us? You know, basically Thomas is kind of freaking out about, you know, how will we know how, you know, we know not with whether thou goest and how can we know the way, right? So that's the first one. It's like Jesus is giving them a promise and he's telling them, be at peace. I'm, where I'm going, you're going to be joining me. But Thomas is like, well, how are we going to get there? And then Jesus said, listen, you know, if you know me, you know my father, you know that I'm keeping my promise, that I promise you exactly what I'm going to do and you're going to be with me. And Philip is saying, well, you know, um, <laughs> basically that he doesn't have faith in who Jesus is because he says, well, Jesus, show us the father and that will suffice. Like, in other words, I'm not having peace with the words you're saying. Just show us God. Show us who God is, and then maybe I'll have peace. And Jesus is saying, wow, Philip, you've been with me for three years, and you still don't know. So let's look at this for a minute. None of us have seen Christ in the physical. I can't say none of Maybe Maybe you've seen him, and, and, and maybe he's come to you. But it's not... It's not like we're living with him like we live with family or with, um, you know, roommates or whatever. It's like these are people who were physically with Jesus for three years. And Philip is saying, you know, show us who God is. Because basically Jesus is saying, I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to be killed. And they're like, you know, how could these things be? And so here it is, you know, they are trying to figure out how it could be possible for Christ to be who he says he is when he's letting himself be murdered, basically, beaten, all the things that he scorched, all the things that he went through. So their faith was completely shaken, you know, and so he goes on and talks about, listen, you know, not only am I going and I'm preparing a place for you, but I'm sending someone to you the Holy Spirit that will give you all that you need. Everything that you got from me, you're going to actually get more from the Holy Spirit. And not only will you get more from the Holy Spirit, but he is going to enable you to do things even bigger and greater than what I was able to do. So I just want to encourage us today that where we fix our attention and focus, if, we, if, our, if our faith is shaken, it means that we've taken our eyes off of the promises and the truth of the word. Because the truth is what it is. Nothing changes it. Now we can be looking at other things, focusing on problems, um, being concerned about situations that we're afraid are going to happen. 
But those things aren't true. These promises are fixed. They're real. They're unshakable, unmovable, never changing. So we can put our eyes on the truth. If you're feeling fear, if you're feeling concern or worry, it just means you're looking at the wrong thing. So uh, when I start, when that stuff starts bubbling up in me, I start speaking to it. I tell, I know you're not from God. I know you're a liar because God has no desire for me to feel fear in any way, shape, or form. And then I start speaking the word over me, who I am, what God promised for me, and who I am in the world and what God has given me to carry. So have faith, speak faith, trust God. Shift your focus away from the things that are bothering you or con causing concern and speak the word over yourself because God has given us everything we need, has equipped us thoroughly for this walk that we are in right now. We are called for just this very time. So be encouraged and I appreciate you listening. God bless you.